And um, I think this is okay. I mean, I think this is a fine position for Black. He's he's okay. I don't know that he's that he's better or anything. Um, so if we're trying to find the the critical line, though, I think probably you know knight eight, knight h six is is the critical line. And um, here White will will take on h six, and then play knight e one. The idea behind knight e one is that he wants to play a three, and win the pawn back, um, because if we come here, we walk into you know this pawn hangs. Um, right now he doesn't want to take that because we our knight is, is in position to just take it back like if he played knight takes d5 um, well yeah it's not even it's not even threatened yet until playing knight d1 actually threatens this and um, in this position uh, I'm recommending this move c6 which is uh, this is the main line and, and you know defends this d5 pawn from attack and after a3 knight d3 takes takes he wants to play queen takes because one of his main ideas is to play this knight to e2 to f4 to h5 to get a kingside attack. That's one of the, the main themes of this line. And so queen takes d3 is definitely better. And here I'm proposing a novelty. I don't think there's anything so wrong with queen c7. Um, Ever gives castles, which I think is kind of a casual move. I don't think it's, it's correct. But I'm going to recommend a novelty here, b4. Um, he almost has to take it. Like the idea is that in, in one of the main lines, Everett gives what black goes b4 and white plays a4, but he can't do that here because the knight's hanging. So we force the file open and get counterplay on the on the queen side. So in a position like this, uh, queen d2, you know, attacks the the h6 pawn. Um, I'm proposing to just castle, and you know, white clearly gets uh, gets some kingside chances here. But I think that black, by opening a file on the queen side, has his fair share of play. And uh, again, I don't have any games that I can reference here, but uh, one of the themes you really constantly have to be looking out for is a sacrifice on this square. So you have to be very careful about that. And um, like in this position, uh, you know, one, one, one strong, actually surprisingly strong line is if black plays something like queen b6, you play a move like bishop e2 with the idea of playing the bishop here. And then uh, if we look in this position, uh, he's now threatens to play knight a4, having stopped this threat. So if black plays something like queen c7, then all of a sudden, you know, bishop d3 becomes interesting with the idea of f5, and then taking on a6, and um, with a sack, you know, you can sack on here in some lines, so you have to be careful. Like for example, um, if you take on a6, I think taking on a6 is is the best move, and then uh, this kind of leads to a position where a bunch of stuff gets traded and that's probably a draw and um, I mean I guess we could, we could look at this a little further like queen f7 takes 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 here takes you know basically everything's getting traded um, but you know I think I think if you really analyze this position you, you could find a lot of original ideas uh, for both sides um, so for example in this position, knight a4 is another idea, um, just to guard guard the b2 pawn and attack the queen. But after queen c7, you're now attacking this guy, and the knight is now nowhere near its its intended plan of coming to the king side. So you know now probably white is, would would play, try to play against this pawn on the queen side. But you know black gets this pawn, and and again I think a lot of things are getting traded, and and, uh, and black has his fair share of play here after a move like bishop b7. Um, rook d2 is another idea. And um, in this position, you know, black can consider like king h8 and rook g8 ideas. Um, rook a4 is what the computer is suggesting. Because, um, you know, if you take on b2, you know, he can swing a piece over. Uh, so again, you know, you see one of the ideas here is queen b4, knight c3, bishop f5. Bishop f5 is a common theme to, to guard the king side here. And so you know, I think it's a really interesting novelty, and and I think that that black gets gets reasonable play in, in a lot of these lines. So, um, so those are my ideas. Uh, queen d7 is my novelty in the main uh, d5 line, and this this idea of uh, b4 um, in the uh, in this line. Uh, there is one other line that I, that needs to be mentioned before we move on, and that is what if uh, white just plays this annoying move, bishop f4. I actually think this is kind of annoying and stronger than it looks. I mean, the idea is basically that uh, he's going to play queen e2 and rook a d1, and he's just going to sit on these pawns, and it just becomes hard to actually find active moves. Like, I think castling is reasonable. 
we look in the database, um, yeah, there's game. This has been played. Queen e2. I mean, it's only scored 31%. Uh, and we're going to play b5 in response to queen e2. Rook a d1 is the idea. And uh, you know, we don't have like really strong players to go off of. But knight b4 seems to have been the the move that's played most often. I guess one of the ideas is that you know, lots of times you played knight d3 and then took the bishop on c1, and he's wasted a whole tempo to move it to f4, where it can still just be taken when the knight comes to d3. So you know, in this position. Um, If he tries like knight e5, again we have this knight d7 idea, and so you know probably again he's going to try something like knight e1, and um, you know I don't know I mean I, I don't know what what black should actually play here until white, you know maybe he should he should play a move like uh, bishop b7 is is a possibility. Um, Rook e8 certainly can't be bad. Um, maybe one of the ideas behind bishop b7 is. After a3, we can just play back to c6. Um, but d5 seems to actually be interesting here. So, you know, one possibility is you don't play knight before, you just play um, bishop b7 immediately here is actually an interesting idea. And um, you just play queen c8. Um, you're just, you know, opening up this square. But maybe this is a little too passive. I don't know. This bishop f4 is not that popular, but I felt like I should mention it because it has been played. Uh, by strong players. And I, I haven't really figured out, uh, spent a lot of time figuring out how to defuse that move because, you know, play becomes very concrete and these d5 lines with bishop f4, it's a little more fluid and you kind of have to decide what to what to do. And uh, so I don't know, you know, it's 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 tricky, you know, maybe maybe knight b4 is still the idea. Um, and after knight e1, maybe, maybe something like rook e8 so that you're putting the rook, rook opposite the queen in case he tries this move d5. So maybe this is, that would be the way to go. Um, so yeah, so I think that that uh, this is, gives pretty good coverage of, of our line um, and the knight c3 line. Uh, so if, if you'll remember, we prefer to play rook b8. We don't have to play bishop d7 here. Again, when he plays e4, we just move, move a bishop and develop, and we don't play b5 until he actually forces us to. On the concrete d5 line, we take, take, knight b4, knight e5, bishop f5, because we have to give the, the c pawn back here. Then I'm recommending... Instead of, you know, you can get easy equality with probably taking here, castling and playing this knight e8 uh, to d6 idea. But I'm recommending this this castles and queen d7 idea, uh, where I think the main line here is is this bishop e3 move probably. And um, I'm recommending rook f e8 so that you can play this uh, uh, c5 idea. And in the queen e2 line, I, I'm saying play b5, rook d1, knight b4, anticipating d5. And here, you know, here he's not going to take back on d5. Um, like if he takes back here, for example, uh, you're just already set up to, to do very well. For example, uh, just castles here, and, and what's he even threatening? You know, this is different from the other position because he wasn't able to, you know, he wasn't able to get this this pawn back. So, um, you know, this is just bad. Now this is just a weak pawn while we still have mobile pawns. So that's just something to keep in mind. And uh, I'm recommending that after knight g4, h3, you play either this knight takes f2 as a novelty, um, or you play back to, to h6 and, and play my uh, b4 novelty. Um, in addition, you have to be aware of this knight e5, knight e7. You know, this is probably going to be a very, very common move, is that people will think they can play knight e5, and then you'll play knight d7 and, uh, and get a good position. Um, he probably has to go in for queen g4, uh, g6. And if they play the knight e1, then we you remember, have to remember the Morozevich game where um, uh, he just uh, I believe he ca I believe believe it, it went uh, castles a3. Uh, let me double check that game just so I'm giving you good information. Yeah, castles a3, knight c6, d5, to, and then when he pushes e5, instead of playing bishop g4, I'm proposing just playing knight g4, and I think that. Uh, that uh, black gets fantastic play, as you saw in all those tactical lines. Um, and in fact, if he plays h3 here, um, yeah, if he plays h3, we can just take here. Um, and uh, again, just every every none of the captures really worked out. You know, you can see the computers just saying minus two. So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, the second video. Um, in the third video in this series, I'm going to discuss. Um, in this position, instead of knight c3, I'm going to discuss this move a4, and then I'm also going to talk about knight a3. 
and I give my recommendations against those two sidelines. And they can be played at various points. They're not, um, like A4 can be played earlier or later, but it generally it's going to reach the same positions because white's generally going to castle here. So, um, And I'll show how to play against A4. I, I don't really have much respect for, for A4. And knight A3 is a little, uh, it's a little trickier, and you see it, and, and you know, it's not, not so clear what to do against it. But uh, in my third video, I'll go over those, and then in the last video, I'll look at early knight five lines and uh, queen A4 check. So I hope you've enjoyed the second video in my series on decloying the Catalan, and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, what's up? This is Casio. This is going to be my third video in my series on uh, defusing and declawing the Catalan. Um, there's one thing I wanted to mention from my last video before moving on. I uh, talked briefly about this position, you know, where white plays d5, and I recommended this uh, novelty um, in this position of queen d7. And I mentioned with f4 that white had this interesting idea of playing knight e5, and I suggested a5, and I talked about b takes a5 and knight takes a5, but I didn't actually talk about what to do if he plays the knight to e5. So uh, there's a tactical point here. You should go ahead and take it, and then play a takes b4. And if they play this move e takes f6, you have this bishop takes f6. This is a really important resource. And now, uh, you know, we can see that the knight on c3 is pinned to the rook. And it doesn't help if he plays like a takes b4, um, because you just play bishop takes b4, and again, you know, this knight is under attack, so if he plays e takes f6, you can just take it. So I thought I should mention that, that, you know, that's the tactical justification in addition to the uh, to other stuff. So in this video, I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, two systems for white. Uh, one is if he plays a4, and the other is if he plays knight a3. The a4 is not so common a move among grandmasters, but you will see it a lot. Like if you play blitz games, um, or you know if you're just playing at the club level, a lot of people they have an almost knee-jerk reaction where you play a6, they play a4. Period. Whatever opening they're playing, you know the Bononi, it's you know etc. But here it's not it's not so clear that that it's a good move, and and I don't really think it's the best move. Um, it does have some interesting ideas. Um, one of them is that. Uh, if you play b5 now, he gets to play a takes b5, you know, a takes b5. So he gets this open file for his rook. So that's one point. Uh, in addition, um, there's lines where uh, if he's played a5 and and you play b5 and he takes here, you have to take back with a c-pawn. And when you take back with a c-pawn, you now no longer have this move c6 available to support, um, you know, your pawn chain. So there are lines where he pushes d5 now, and this is now a passed pawn rather than, you know, like we saw in the previous videos where it's on d5, but you still have a, a pawn on c7. So um, let me think, what else does a4 do? Uh, there are also lines where he pushes it onto a5 and can play this idea of rook a4, which is kind of interesting in some lines. Um, so what are the drawbacks of a4? Well, the biggest drawback is that he spins a move, you know, a non-developing move. Um, the other drawback is it weakens the, the b4 square, which is key in a lot of lines, you know. I mean, but you can just play bishop b4 against a lot of random stuff. Uh, so I'm recommending we keep playing our, our normal repertoire, which is to play knight c6. This is always directed against knight e5, where, you know, we'll take it if he, if he hops to e5. Um, and note that, that this is positions reachable. He could also castle, and then when you play knight c6, he could play a4 now. Um, so there are various points. You know, Again, I'm recommending just continuing on and playing our normal repertoire. And at any point here, white could play uh, you know, a4. But now black is threatening to play b5, which is kind of you know the main idea. So white typically plays one of two moves um, here. And I'll go through the, the lesser played move first, you know, like knight c3. Against knight c3, this is directed against b5. For example, why can't we just play b5 here? Well, if we play b5, takes, takes, knight e5, we notice something has happened here. Namely that uh, when we try to play our normal antidote to this move, which is to just take, well, we see now that, that you know, this move bishop c6 is kind of annoying, you know, uh, hitting our, our uh, pawn on b5 and our... And our knight on d7. And he didn't have this, you know, in other moves, you know, before we'd play b5. Um, because often we'd still have a pawn on a6 there. So in that position, you know, 
sorry, let me, uh, in this position, you know, if he hadn't played a4 and a b, well, this, this pawn on b5 wouldn't be weak. We'd still have a, a 